Hi everyone, this is Frost Dragon, and today I am going to be uh, making a a little uh, how-to video, uh, a tutorial, almost I guess. Like a, I'm going to be making a tutorial about how to play Civilization Three. Civilization 3 is one of my favorite games. I've been playing it for a long time. And I I know a lot about it. And I'm going to be playing a lot of it. I'm going to be playing a lot of different types of games. Uh, maybe some of them online. You know, I'll, I'll broadcast them live. Um, but for now, I wanted to make a a video of myself playing Civilization 3 and I wanted to explain how I play it and I thought and for me if I do it in a how-to video tutorial format um, I'll be able to explain a lot about the game to help new people but then also explain the things that I maybe do differently than other people I don't know I was gonna watch the uh, I was gonna watch the opening video just for just for fun. So, um, hold on, I'll I'll restart it. I haven't seen the opening video in a long time, so I'm gonna I kind of want to check it out anyways. That was very, uh, that was very uneventful, I think. Uh, a little anticlimactic. I thought there would be a little more action in that sequence, but hey, that's it. So, Civilization 3, game I played a lot. I'm probably, uh, gonna do a little bit of broadcasting, uh, of Civilization 2 as well. Civilization 1, 4, 5. I'll do all of them a little bit here and there. Uh, I'll probably do some more than others, like... I'll probably check Civilization 2 out, maybe do a little Civilization 2 tutorial, play it for a bit, but I probably won't stick too long on Civilization 2. Uh, 1, again, I'll probably play it a bit. Not gonna play it too much, though. I'll probably play 2. I'll probably play 2 more than I play 1. I'll probably play 2 more than I play 5. And then 4 and 3 are going to be the two main ones. So to me, Civilization 3, Civilization 4, those are the two real crown jewels of the series. Uh, it's hard for me to decide which one I prefer. I'm not sure whether I whether I prefer 3 or, or 4, really. it's For me, it's a tough call. For me, it's a very tough call. So I hope the sound is alright. I hope the sound is okay. And, um, basically, basically I, um, I, 
just installed the game because I want to show in the, in the beginning what preferences that I choose and what preferences I would suggest you choose if you're playing the game for the first time or whatever. So, um, I had the game installed. I have a lot of save games that I've been playing over the last little while. And um, I, I saved them all and put them away and I, I deleted the game and I, I re reinstalled it. So this is a, a brand new uh, installation of, of the game. So when you first install the game and you go to the preferences, there are a lot of preferences to choose from. There are a lot of things that the game uh, gives you by default that you might not necessarily want. Oh, there, for me, there's a lot of things that I think are horrible and that need to be changed. So I'm going to turn down the music a bit. This is more for me. I hope it looks good on the stream. Two. The sound effects. I don't know. I usually, I usually play with the sound a little. Just, you know, for whatever. And then try to try to get a good balance. Anyways, so um, right off the bat, there are quite a few of these options that I want to select. And depending on depending on how you play, maybe you want to tailor them a little bit to your to your tastes, right? So um, right off the bat. Uh, I'll, I'll just start at the top, okay? So autosave is very important. Capital governor is default for new for new cities. Not really that important. I don't know, like you don't really mess with the governors too much. Um, always wait at the end of turn. This is uh, to not select that to me is can really mess up your game. You can really mess up your game if you leave that unselected. I would highly, highly suggest you select that unless you know what you're doing. Which, if you're watching this because you are you want to play Civilization for the first time, uh, you don't, you don't, you definitely... That is, I think, a thing that they did to... Because a lot of players who are new, okay, might not... Might... Like there's a there's a lot to learn. If you're playing this game for the first time, it it's very it's very daunting. There's a lot to learn. It's a very complex game. And um, this just like a new player might not even really. So, so this just skips this just, this just ends your turn for you. Whenever all your stuff's done, but when all your stuff's done, you you don't if you're if you know what you're doing, you don't want the the game to end for you because. There are things that you have to do every turn. And I'm not going to do them all right away. I'm not going to do everything the way I do it. What I'm going to do right now is I'm basically, I'm going to <clears throat> start a game. And I'm going to try to set the options to the game, for the game, to make the, the shortest game possible. I'm trying to make the shortest game that I can possibly make. I'm trying to finish it as fast as I possibly can. The fastest civilization game I think that I can set up that I can show uh, people what the game looks like and about it as quickly as possible. And I think just I think just doing that, I'm looking at I would say at least probably I think 10 hours, 10 or 15 hours um, minimum for a, a, a really short game of civilization. Maybe I'm maybe I'm being a little generous. Maybe I could wrap it up in five, six, I don't know. I I don't really, I've never really timed myself, you know? So right off the bat, always wait at the end of turn. Definitely, definitely want to check that. That is a, that is a very, uh, uh, so uh, all this stuff, tutorial mode, I mean, you could throw that on. I'm not going to throw that on. This, this is something I like because it just helps you see better, but I'll leave it off for now. Um, now, normally, I'm not going to leave uh, the game to show me everyone's moves. Because whenever you start to get into bigger games, and you see all your friends and enemies' moves every turn, sometimes, it eventually, it, it starts to take a long time. So eventually, you say, well, I, I don't really need to see my friend's moves, because it's my friend. I'm not really concerned about what he's doing. But for now, I'll leave it on. 
Uh, same with animate. So animate automatic moves. You know, that's going to just save some time off your game. I'm going to take that off in a bit. But I'll leave a lot of these for now just to... So when I change them later, people will... I'll be able to show the, the difference. So, um... Colorblind help is kind of cool. Colorblind help is kind of cool. It just shows beside the cities whose city it is. Uh, beside the name, it's written. Instead of just having the colors, it's just it just says whoever the city belongs to. Um, a lot of this stuff, not really super uh, important. So you get over here. Now over here, there are a few important options that I have to have selected. One of them is always renegotiate deals. So whenever you re renegotiate deals, you have um, you have a deal with someone, and the deal only lasts for 20 turns. So every 20 turns, you have to renew the deal, or else the deal will just end. So you you can't you can't let the deal deals end. You 20 turns is nothing. You want to you know, like, you have to do this all the time. To try to have to remember every time one of your deals ends to go and talk to the guy and redo it rather than it just happening automatically. I mean, it's... Advanced unit action buttons. I'll show them, even though I'm probably going to use mostly hotkeys for... for, um... military. Fewer multiplayer pop-ups. Could use that. This, this is, a. Uh, more for advanced players. It's something that I think is interesting. I don't use it too much, but it's something I, I find interesting. Uh, over here, always build previously built unit. You definitely want to select this because otherwise your city will start to decide what to build for you. Um, there's one more thing that I think I'm missing. So cancel orders for friendly combat unit. I'm going to leave that on for now because it's the beginning of the game, but I'm going to turn that one on light off later. And I, eventually I'm going to turn off the enemy one too. And I'll explain why if the game goes that far. Okay. Now here's, here's an option right here. Ask for build orders after unit construction. So if you don't turn this on, your, your cities will build units indefinitely. If you don't remember to change what they're building. And you don't want that because uh, you, you want to, uh, units cost gold for maintenance, like in any game. So you can't just, sometimes you can, sure. But I mean, so, and th this ask for build orders after unit construction. This is kind of tied to this actually a little in a way, um, always build previously be built units. So. If, if you have both these deselected, it's just your, your city's going to build units and it's not going to build whatever you told it to build. It's going to build one of whatever you told it to build. And then it's going to start deciding to build whatever it thinks that is best. And it doesn't know what's best. The computer may tell you it knows what's best, but it doesn't. The computer's wrong. It doesn't know what's best. It doesn't know shit. So you have to tell it what to do constantly. No, there's a few things that you can trust it with. There are a few tasks that you can use that the game, Civilization 3 is like Civilization 2 with a few upgrades that make the game um, take a lot less work. Like there's just a few little things that really save you hours, hours of, of, of time in the long run. And I love Civilization 2, but when you get into some of the bigger, longer games, it's so so time consuming. It's it's so time consuming. Uh, you really ha you really have to uh, have a uh, a good a good efficient grip on things where you're moving everything along and there's you know every game goes differently. In some games, when you're some games don't go smoothly I've said it before with other games that I play some games don't go smoothly and some games some games um 
you know, go smoothly. And, you, you know, a lot of games like this where the, the it's not a predefined map that you're playing, every game goes differently. And some games just tend to go better than others. So when a game is going good, okay, great. But sometimes if you're playing Civilization 2 II or 3, you can get into these grudge matches and they just last forever. And it's, I mean, it's insane. So um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, like I said, the fastest map, fastest map that I can possibly play that's going to be decent. So a lot of things about the, the, the type of the type of player that I'm at, that, that I am, uh, and maybe different from a lot of people. Uh, one of the big things is I, I can't stand barbarians. I always turn the barbarians off. Uh, they annoy the crap out of me. I think that they just delay the game and distract the game from, you know. So I, I usually turn the barbarians off. They're kind of annoying. I might play a few games with them for fun, but they're just going to be a distraction. They're just going to be a big distraction. So you can you can decide what kind of uh, continents you want, whether you want more islands or less islands or more water or less water. Now the fastest the fastest game that you can play though is a Pangaea, and that's because a Pangaea doesn't involve ships. It doesn't need to involve ships. So the time the time that you have to add into a, a, a game to build ships and to move your guys across water to to attack people, it it like doubles the, the length of the game. So if you're playing a Pangaea where you only are gonna have to build nothing but land troops. Um, it's going to just be faster. So a tiny Pangaea with 80% water is the smallest landmass that you can start with. Um, one of the things that I like to do is I like to put the age onto 5 billion. And all that does is it makes it so there's less hills and less mountains. And I find that hills and mountains, they add a very, uh, they add like a, a strategic... Thing to this game you know they're they're very important and so when there's less of them it's less things that you have to worry about they're also they also help for production so I forgot to mention that if there's anybody who happens to ever watch this video who's never heard of civilization civilization is a is a, a, a strategy game a turn-based strategy game you take turns everyone has a turn it's like a board game almost and <clears throat> it's called it's what's called a 4x strategy game 4x strategy game is where you control military troops and fight wars but where you also have to manage the economy of your country so that's basically in a nutshell what civilization is <clears throat> so uh when you start the game, you know, you have to go and change some of your options and set them up so that the game's going to work properly. And <clears throat> you have to set some of these options too. So when you make a game, you have a lot of different options of what kind of game you want to play. Um, you have all different kinds of victory modes. Uh, you can build a spaceship and the first person to build a spaceship wins or a diplomatic victory is uh, later in the game when someone builds the United Nations uh, every it initiates like a timer and eventually there's a vote and whoever votes everyone votes for the winner so you have to be on good terms with everybody right so you have all these different you have all these different ways to win and uh, cultural victory is just about uh, having a, you know a, an empire with great culture that eventually you have to get your culture up to a certain level and whoever gets it to that level first wins. Wonder victory? I'm not sure what that is. Get all the wonders? Who knows? I don't play that one. So one of the things that I do is... And I'm... I mean, this isn't like a standard game of civilization. This this is how I play. A lot of people have different ways that they, want, that they, that they maybe like to play. I, I don't play with the space race or with the diplomatic victory. Or anything like that. I don't. I play with war. Conquest is just 
it's a war. And you have to defeat everyone to win. Domination is sort of like conquest. Instead of having to defeat everyone, it's like if you conquer 70 or 80 percent of the of the world then you then you win so it's similar it just ends the game sooner i'll play with domination just because i'm trying to do this quicker culturally linked start location self-explanatory respawn ai players self-explanatory preserve random seed i'll talk about that later cultural conversions something I hate, I would highly recommend you turn off cultural conversions. This is something that maybe is interesting for maybe some scenarios, would be interesting in some scenarios, but if you ask me, it's it's the worst option. It's the worst option here. If, there, if I had to choose to turn one thing off, I would, that this would be it. This would be the thing. Scientific leaders I don't care much for. Accelerated production can be interesting if you're playing with uh, some friends online and you want the game to end faster, but I, I'm playing a standard standard rules civilization game. As fast as possible, regicide, you start with a king. It's interesting. Victory point. Every victory point scoring means that every player's capital gives you a victory point. So capturing capitals is the way to, it's, it's cool. I like it. It's an interesting, uh, I'll probably try that. Capture the princess is like something like reg reg regicide, I guess. I don't play any of those modes. So I've been thinking a lot about, uh, if I was going to play it, make a civilization, uh, tutorial, uh, how to guide, what army would I take? What country would I take? And I talk about, to people online uh, about civilization sometimes on, on internet uh, message boards and stuff. And a lot of people seem to say that Rome is like the default player of civilization. Rome is, uh, they're at the top. They're the first people. They're the, it's all about the Romans, right? So I think I'm going to use Rome and also Rome, Rome can make for a cool theme game. So you have so many different people to choose from, you know, you have the entire world, almost everyone is represented and you can, you can, you can make theme games, you know, you can, you can pick all the Mesoamerican uh, civilizations and you can make a you know, like a jungle battle, you know, like, or whatever, something. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, an ancient Mediterranean theme. So I will pick, uh, Romans and I'll go against Greece and Egypt. And who is the other person? Persia. Carthage should be, should be on here really, actually. It's either Persia or Carthage. Both are tough, so I don't know. Carthage. The Hittites, maybe. Sumeria's way before Rome. I'm pretty sure. I mean, it's Persia. It's Persia or Babylon. I want to go Carthage, but Carth Carthage is hard. They're, they're all going to be hard. So something about civilization is that... Um, something about civilization is that every civilization has traits. So Rome is militaristic and commercial, right? Now what that means is... Uh... You know, their their combat experience is, is gained more quickly. And that's a pretty big thing. Usually when I'm playing Civilization and I'm playing a Conquest, is which is what I usually play, uh, I will usually always take someone who's militaristic because if you're going to be fighting all the time and the game is going to be a non-stop war, 
which sometimes it is, even if you're not trying to make it that way. Some games just turn out that you, you can't avoid fighting. So I like to take militaristic, usually, always. Uh, I like industrious. Industrious is really popular. Workers complete tasks faster. That's a great, that's a great trait. Uh, your workers uh, are better. That's it's it's extremely helpful. They're all really good. Agricultural is arguably one of the best ones. Uh, commercial is a lot of people love commercial. Less less corruption is experienced. I love that. That's a great one. Uh, scientific is really good. You get free tech, a few free techs during the game. Seafaring is great if you're playing a where there's going to be islands or 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 even not, uh, depending, you know. Uh, religious is really cool. Religious is really good. I, I like a lot of them. I like a lot of them. A lot of times I will use... Uh, a lot of times I will use Egypt. Egypt is... Uh, religious and industrious, which are like two very, very good traits. And um, they're, they're unique units. So one of the things about uh, every civilization is, is every civilization has a unique unit. And all the ancient civilizations tend to have their unique units in the ancient age. So in playing an ancient theme battle, I have a Roman special unit, you know, Roman legion. But I have to fight against the Egyptian special unit. Which is a, a war chariot. And it's a really... The reason why the Egyptian war chariot is so good is because it, it's a... It's a horseman. It has the same stats as a horseman. And it's cheaper. It's the price of an archer. So it's... It's ridiculously good. Okay, Egypt has arguably one of the best... Uh, unique units in the game. Arguably one of the best... Uh, people in the game. As I start to play more more games live, and once I have a few games uploaded uh, of mine uh, that I've done live, a lot of them are gonna be Egypt, for sure. Uh, Persia is also extremely strong. Uh, I, I The reason I don't use Persia is because I think they're too strong. The game is almost too easy if you pick Persia. They're, they're a unique unit. Um, is really strong. Greece also has a very strong unique unit. I hate playing against Greece in the ancient age, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm playing against them, but I'm I'm hoping that. I mean, I may not win, right? I may not win. All three of these people that I'm against have extremely strong specialty units, and so do I. So I have my advantage. They all have their advantages. Who will win? So the way the difficulty setting works is um, Chieftain is the easiest. Uh, it goes up. It goes up slowly up to uh, Sid. Now, Monarch is the last difficulty setting where you and the computer start with an equal, an equal amount of, of things and uh, they don't get anything extra. So Regent, Warlord, you get a little, they get a little disadvantage, I guess. Um, and then Emperor, the computer will start to get uh, advantages. And Emperor is, Monarch to Emperor is the real big jump in difficulty. So, um, I'm going to put it on Monarch for now just because this game is going to be hard enough since I have to fight against Persia and Greece. Not like, I mean, Egypt, I'm hoping that I can, I'm hoping that I can take one of them out before they get too big, before they get powerful. Like Persia, I can maybe destroy them before they get their specialty unit, hopefully. Greece, uh, they get theirs right at the beginning, so it's going to be kind of be hard. Egypt, they have to research something. <clears throat> and they need uh, they need uh, resources. They need horses. 
you don't always get horses sometimes you have to capture them so um i i will play on emperor plenty most of the time that i'm playing i'll probably play on emperor demigod deity basically all all that does is is it uh it gives the computer more advantages you know by the time you get the deity and 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 demigod the computer's starting with like three or four settlers so you're sitting there with one city having to try to build a settler and the computer gets three and you know they have five cities by the time you have two or three you know it's it's insane i think this is going to be hard enough on monarch so i'm going to try it but you know the next game will probably be on uh, emperor All right, so um, this looks like a half decent start. I should be able to work with this. Um, you start out, you can't see anything. You have a settler and a worker. Usually you are just gonna build your city wherever you start. Sometimes you might wanna move. Not very often, though. So, starting out the game, I'm allowed to build a few different things. Um, archers. Warriors, not. I'm going to build a warrior because it's the cheapest thing, and it's just basically to look around. I need to get a scout. Um... Your city has three your city has three things around it three types of things you have uh you have production which are these blue things food which are the uh the bread and coins so your city uh when you start out has one citizen so your citizen works one tile you can decide to to tell that citizen which tile he's going to work on. And depending on which tile you pick will will give you, you know, a different thing. So th this forest has furs in it. Furs is a special resource. So if I put my worker to work on the furs, I get an extra coin from it. And my coin is distributed three ways depending on what my tax rate is. So I'm getting three coins from my city center square. Plus I'm getting a coin from the square that the furs are on. That gives me four coins. My four coins are divided in half because I have 50% of my income put towards science and 50% of my income towards my treasury. So it's very simple. It's very simple. Your city needs food to grow every person eats two food so i'm getting three food i'm getting two food on my city center square and i'm getting one food from the forest this guy eats two food and the spare food gets put into a granary or i don't have a granary yet but it, it gets stored it gets stored and uh when the when the storage fills up the city will grow and i'll have two workers and I'll have two workers, I'll be able to have more more production, more food, more coins, and your cities basically just build up like that. So, um, this city is going to grow in 10 turns, because it's getting four food. And this citizen is eating one, and the spare two are being stored till I have 20. And then the city will grow. And when the city grows, it gets better. You have more production to build more warriors, archers, what have you. Uh, so I I have I have it memorized what every square does. Every square does something different. Some squares give you production. Some squares give you food. Some squares give you food and production. Some squares give you food and coins. Uh generally water squares give you food and coins hills and, and and forests give you production and this is a plain 
and this green this green area here this is grass so grass and plains give you your food then on top of that you have these special resources around like this wheat this wheat will will mean if my if my worker works this tile with the wheat on it it will get even more food than if it were just to work a tile that was just a, a grass by itself so um your worker can build roads he can build farms and he can build mines now right off the bat uh our farming technology is not great there's a lot of corruption we're not going to be building a lot of farms farms are for a little later depending on where you start so this this grass has a little icon on it that icon is a shield it's a little shield so a normal grass gives me two food okay this one with the shield on it gives me two food and a shield so it's just a little bit better than a normal grass so the first thing i'm going to do is uh, I'm going to mine. I'm going to build mines because I want to get my production up. This grass that's around my city will give my city enough food to keep it going in the, these early stages of the game. So right, right away I'm going to be building a lot of mines. And I'm going to be building roads in between my cities mostly. And getting all my cities connected to each other once there is three or four and um just building mines around them so that they all have uh good production okay so that's that's kind of part of the first turn the other thing that you got to do when you when you start the game is you you need to choose a technology to research this is the technology tree the technology tree has four pages ancient times middle ages uh the industrial era and modern times so there's a lot of there's a lot of technologies that you have to get and that you have to decide what order to get them in which ones are important when uh is a lot of is a lot of uh a lot of learning to understand what to get when there's a it, it takes a long time to learn how every game can be different and in some games maybe you want to you know try to get your gunpowder so that you can uh, defend yourself maybe in another game you're, you're trying to get your university so you can uh, so you can uh, you know get better technology so education so a couple of the main points in this game the main things that you're that you're that you're looking for Okay, this right here, stealth, this is the best technology in the game. When you get stealth bombers, this is what you want. This is what everybody wants. You want to get the stealth bombers and... Where is it? There are nukes here. So, ICBM. So, once you start, once you got ICBMs, you're pretty much at the end of the game. You need uranium and aluminum to build an ICBM. There are tanks, modern tanks. But th this, a lot of games aren't going to get this far. You're not going to see this era in, in every game. You will not. This era, most games. Uh, so in the Middle Ages, like I already said, there's a technology here called education. When you get education, it unlocks the university. The university is a very crucial building for your game, for a lot of your games. Other crucial things that are going to be real milestones is military tradition right here. This technology right here gives you a soldier called the cavalry. A huge offensive punch so um, when you unlock cavalry 
Um, if you can build enough of them, you can you can make a move and you can uh, you can really change the game for yourself. Feudalism is a big one too. When you're coming into the Middle Ages, gives you your medieval infantry, who's a uh, standard foot soldier, skilled warrior. And then your pikeman. Now your pikeman is going to be your second big defensive unit in the game. So, um, everybody starts off with two technologies. I've started off with warrior code because I'm militaristic. And alphabet because I'm commercial. Two really great technologies to start off with. Um... Key things that you're looking for in the ancient age is this, ironworking. Ironworking is going to allow me to build my specialty unit, the legionary. It's going to allow everyone else to build swordsmen. And there's a few other specialty units depending if you're, uh, if you get a specialty swordsman. So if, if I was anybody but the Romans, I would be building swordsmen. But since I'm Rome, instead of building swordsmen, I built I build uh, legions, so that's my bonus. Now, <clears throat> horseback riding can be big. Um, horsemen are pretty cool. There are a lot of people who have specialty units in the ancient era. All the uh, Mesoamerican civilizations. So the Aztecs have Jaguar warriors instead of archers. Um, I don't know who this has. Has the javelin thrower. I guess that's the Mayans. Alright, so um, ironworking. Very, very important. Um, map making. So, uh, Alphabet allows you to build a, uh, a ship that is uh, unable to transport anybody. It's just uh, for exploration. So, map making allows you to, to build a transport ship for the first time. So, that is a very key technology to get. Um, ironworking. Construction is a big one. And... Um, your first government, your first, the government that you start out with is a, you know, some kind of tribal government. So your first real government, you have two choices. You have monarchy and republic. So depending on the way things are going, depending on the kind of, the kind of country that you have, you have to decide early on in the game whether or not you're going to try to become a republic or you're going to become a monarchy. And depending on how the events unfold in each game you have to make a decision whether or not you should do one or the other uh, other big technologies is this right here pottery allows you to build a building called the granary and the granary is going to allow your cities to grow a lot faster and this is a uh, extremely important early on so i would say 99 percent of the time uh, no matter who you are, no matter who you're being, unless you start with pottery, you're going to be researching pottery right off the bat. So, next thing you're next thing uh, you're going to do is okay. So these are your advisors. If you press, uh, you click this button here. This is your advisors, right? You can also press F1 to F6 to go in between them. So, um. Here you can see your cities. You can see the production in your cities. You can see how many people are in your cities and if they're happy or not. How much uh, coin you're getting, whatever signs from each city, what they're building. And you can change your tax rate. So right off the bat, uh, there are no expenses. There, isn't, there aren't any buildings, there aren't any uh, military. So um, right off the bat, you're, you're going to want to put your science to 100 and research pottery that is pretty much the unequivocal uh first turn in civilization 
Uh, you want to move on to a shield if you have one. If you don't, you want to try to uh, figure something out. <laughs> There's a lot to think about. So, first turn's over. That's pretty much how you play uh, standard first turn in Civilization. I'm going to get into city placement and that in the next little bit. This guy's going to go ahead and mine. So you can mine hills and uh, mountains. And you can also, you can you can mine grass and uh, plains too. You can mine anything. So I'm going to mine the grass to start the game. Because that's going to give that tile one extra shield. So instead of having two, few, two food and one shield, which are shields equal production, that, that means production. Uh, it'll have two. It'll be two and two. So that'll be uh, that'll be excellent. It'll be exactly like this one. Whereas right now it has one production. When that mine is done, it's going to take six turns to build the mine. So I'm just going to end a couple turns. I built uh, my first warrior. So I'm going to continue building warriors. I'm going to build another one. This guy is going to try to contact the other civilizations so I could go and I could explore this area and try to decide where I want to build my city but I'm not going to build a settler to go build another city anytime soon so I'm going to try to go as far as possible with this guy and try to contact the other civilizations so that I can trade with them one of the things that I do as Rome and or that I do um, with anyone is I don't research bronze working. I try hard not to research it. Instead, I will try to trade for it. I will I will just hope that in any game that I'm playing, that I can trade and get bronze working. And then I will research iron working. It's just... Usually you can. Usually someone will be willing to trade this, this to you. Uh, if you start with a good tech, like alphabet is a good tech to start with. Not a lot of people probably have alphabet right now. So when I meet somebody, if they have bronze working, they're probably going to want to trade me for alphabet. Warrior code also is a good one. Not a lot of people start with it. So the problem is, is if somebody starts with warrior code and then they, they've already traded it to them and then they don't want it. We'll see how it plays out. So, uh, my... First mine is done, so now that the mine is done, I'm going to build a road. Now, whenever I build the road, that's going to give me, that's going to give me, um, it's going to give me one more coin on the square. So right now this square is getting two food and two production, same as this square. When you build the road on it, uh, it gives you a coin. So it gives you a little more uh, commerce. And whenever your guys walk on the road, they can walk further. So this this uh, this warrior can only walk one square. If the warrior was on a road, he could walk three. Your movement gets... Uh, it only uses a third of your movement. So there's Greece. I'm going to walk towards him. I want to make contact. Greece does have bronze working. I'm pretty sure they do start with bronze working. So I don't care what I have to give him. Alright, so this city just grew. Now, it's getting two food two production, and a coin from that square. The city is, is deciding that it wants to uh, use this square because this square has extra food on it because it's the wheat. But, in all honesty, I would rather it use this square. Maybe. So I, I could get... I could get to... You know, six food and have extra production and have five, five per turn. Or I can sacrifice a bit of production 
and the city will grow faster because it's got an it's got more more food. I'm gonna let this happen for one turn because when because this guy's gonna finish in one turn either way, if that makes sense. Now deciding where to move this guy right now, this is getting to be kind of a tough choice. I can either move here and I can build a mine here because my city's always gonna want to use this this wheat because it's uh helps the it grow faster and if the city grows faster it will produce more so um i can either move to this shield and build a mine or move to here and build a mine or i can cut this forest down to build my granary faster so when you when you cut down trees you'll give uh you can give production to your city but sometimes you want to keep your trees around because you need them for production. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the, the wheat. I don't see anybody from Greece. All right, so I'm going to talk to Greece now. So here's Greece, okay? He says, I am Alexander of the wise and benevolent Greeks. These guys are uh, a little bit arrogant sometimes. So I have a few options. I can propose a deal with him. I can ask him for, for gold. Or I can declare war on him. Or I can tell him goodbye. I don't want to declare war. He probably doesn't even have gold. I want to see what technology he has. So, he has a few technologies that I don't have, and I have a few technologies that he doesn't have. So, the best outcome that I can get from this deal is to get two technologies from him. The, 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 at the worst, I got to get at least one. So, the chances are I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get bronze working for him, from him. Now... If I had a choice between masonry and ceremonial burial, right now I would say ceremonial burial because it allows me to build temples and temples are very important and I'll explain that later. So, I will say, uh, if I was to give you warrior code, would you give me bronze working? He would not. What if I was to give him pottery? He doesn't want to trade one for one. So I'm going to try to give him two. He's probably gonna gonna be good to have two for one, but he's probably not gonna want to do two for two. So if I throw ceremonial burial in he'll in here, he's not gonna go for it. Say even if I give him my ten gold, no. So I'm lucky to get bronze working from him. I'm happy. Now. I kind of want to get ceremonial burial because temples are important. But I have a lot of my main technologies. I don't really need the wheel that much. And, or, or masonry. So, I can go ahead and I can start building, getting writing, which could be very helpful. And, I'll be able to trade writing for ironworking. But if they get writing, it doesn't even matter either because... I'm going to get something else. Let's say I was to research Code of Laws. Well, I could trade Code of Laws for Iron Working. And chances are that nobody else is going to get Code of Laws. So I'm going to go ahead and research something up here. And trade for this later. Because I want to get more technology. Now, here, here's, a, here's another funny thing about the uh, technology tree. Philosophy is kind of a useless technology. It doesn't give you anything. However, the first person to research it gets a free technology. So I started with Alphabet. And chances are there are people who didn't start with Alphabet. So I have an advantage in that I can go ahead and I can research writing immediately. And I'm going to do that. And even if I don't get philosophy first, I'll be able to trade it. I should be able to trade it to somebody. And I should be able to get iron working. And it doesn't matter because I'm probably not going to build 
my special unit for a while anyways. So I built another warrior. I guess I'll go and explore with this one. Here's the thing. I can build a warrior in two turns. I'm going to build a mine on the wheat. Now, I could irrigate the wheat. And instead of getting three, three food, I could get four. But to irrigate... And like irrigating is basically making farms. So so I could build a farm there. But to build a farm, it needs to be beside a river. You can only build farms beside rivers. Like there's a river right here. Now I could build continuous farms from this river all the way down to my, my capital. I could. But I don't have time to do that right now. now that'll take a long time. So I can't really make farms yet because I don't have a river near me. Alright, so uh, I built another warrior. I built another warrior. I'm going to build a granary now. Now what a granary does is when the food storage here fills up. Okay. When the food storage here fills up, uh, it goes back to zero. Every time the city grows, so the city's a size two now because it grew once. I've got two citizens working two different tiles. And uh, each when it grows again in seven turns, the the entire storage gets depleted. Now when I build the granary, Instead of the entire storage being depleted, only half of it gets depleted. So the city will grow twice as fast, basically is what that means. Now you want your city to grow fast because when you build settlers, it takes population from your city. So your city needs to be a size three to build a settler. Because once you build a settler, you lose, it takes two of your population. So... Rome is going to be building a lot of, of settlers. I'm going to have to build like five or six. So when I build this granary, uh, when I build this granary, it's going to, it's going to help. It's going to help a lot because my city is going to be constantly having to, to grow back every time it builds a settler, it's going to shrink. So I'm going to go ahead with the granary. I'm going to leave one guy back in the city just to... Um, keep order. There's a jungle above me.
All right, so um, Rome is going to grow in one turn. This guy's finished this uh, mine, so the production is going to be pretty good in Rome. Rome is going to have some pretty good production going on. So, now Rome is size 3. It's got 6 production. And it's going to build a granary in 7 turns. That's alright. I'm going to move to this grassland next and mine it. And I'm going to keep moving this guy north. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to meet the other people as fast as possible so that if there's any technology to trade, I need to get involved in the trades or else I can get left behind. One of the things that can really hurt you in this game is falling behind uh, in the science race. So you want to try to, you, you have to, you have to try to, you know, to, to maintain some, maintain your place, you know, and uh, you got to kind of, kind of be trying to trade with people as much as you can. Okay, so I started with Grease beside me, and he looks like he is just going to be a awful, awful enemy to try to beat. I didn't get a great start. Uh, Grease is a really powerful person to have to start beside. But this city is... Rome is, is a pretty good city. Rome is a pretty good city. So he just built his second city. And he's right beside me. This is going to be a tough game. I might, I like, I, I might have to get, I might have to get, um, iron just to beat him. So I'm going to build a settler. I'm going to need a city right here. Or else I'm going to, I'm going to be cut off from the world. So, production is 8. Like, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh. Okay, I'm going to cheat now. Okay, this is this is what happens when I cheat. So, I, I try really hard not to have civil disorders. So, the, Rome just grew to size 4. 
and I should have known that I was going to have to change the tax rate. So, Rome size 4, right? Now, because I have one warrior in garrison, one of the unhappy citizens in the city is content. So, if this if this warrior wasn't here, there would be two unhappy people. So, there's one unhappy person. You need to have one happy person for every unhappy person or your city will have a a disorder. And I have no happy people. I have you have you have three kinds of people. You have happy, you have content, and you have unhappy. So I have no happy people. So if you're unhappy people outnumber your happy people, which mine do because I have none, your city's going to be in civil disorder. So I have to I have to um So uh whereas before my my taxes were going to 50% science and 50% treasury now it's a uh, 50% science 40% treasury and 10% luxury and what luxury does is it makes people happy so I have one coin on the luxury from my 10% it creates a happy person. So now I have one happy person and one unhappy person. So that's fine. My happy people are not outnumbered by my unhappy people. So I'm almost done. I'm almost done the first. Settler. I maybe should have built a. Um, a settler before I built the granary. It could have been helpful. So the thing is, is as soon as this settler is done, Rome is going to go from being a size four to being a size two. So I'm not going to need to have the luxury thing on anymore. So that was only temporary and I, and I knew that the whole time. As I said, so I built a settler, I can turn off the luxuries and I can turn the science back up. So science is at 40%. I'm going to build a city right here. I can't though. I can't. Okay, so I'm going to explain a concept of Civilization 3. Now, here's something that I do when I play that people can do or not do. Uh, you know, people can do whatever works for them. But this is something that I do. Now, your city... All your cities have corruption. So right now I'm getting uh, three coins from this city. If this city, if I had another city that were far away from the capital and it had three coins, I probably wouldn't get all three. I'd probably get two and then one I would lose to corruption. So the further away your cities are from your capital, the, uh, the more corruption you'll have. So... Uh, what that means is the closer the cities, the closer, the closer you have cities, the cities that are closest to your capital have the least amount of corruption. So something that I usually always do when I'm playing Civilization is that I build at least two or three cities that are within one tile of my capital. I'm probably going to build one I'm probably going to build a city right here within two tiles of my capital. I'm probably going to build another one right here. And then uh, I might build one more here. And that's only because I'm starting on this area where I have barely any land. 
So I have to make the most of it. So the way that I can make the most of the land that's around me is by having as many cities as possible right around here. So I want to build a city right here. And I want this to be a city that does nothing but train troops. And that's another thing that I do when I, whenever I play Civilization is uh, uh, my first city that I build after my capital, my second city, is always where uh, I train troops. And I'm, I, I get it to train troops immediately because having that city doing that, that as early as you can possibly get it, started is helpful now i could have got this city built already if i would have built one settler before i built my granary but then this next settler would be later so i chose to build my second city later to get my third city sooner and i honestly think i should do this because i don't trust the greeks i need to get guys over there but I'll, i need troops either way i'm gonna go here this is gonna be my main troop building city probably and i have to get it going asap so i have to fight the greeks the greeks are extremely powerful because they have They're extremely powerful because they have a special unit. The Greek uh, phal phalanx. And I... I'm going to have a very hard time if I have to go to war with them. It's going to be extremely difficult. So I can finish this settler in four turns. Or I can finish it in four. I can't do better than four. Right now. That's fine. Um, I'm going to build a road here. So since the city is going to train troops constantly, it's going to need a barracks. I'm not even going to... So whenever you train uh, somebody, whether it's a spearman or an archer, um, he'll be a regular. And what a regular is, is uh, you see how the warriors that I built all have three hit points? So when, you're, when your warriors fight, they'll, they'll gain experience and... Eventually, they'll become veterans, and when, when, when your guy's a veteran, he'll have four hit points instead of three. And when you build a barracks, what it does is it, uh, it lets you build veterans with four hit points. So I definitely want to build anything that I'm going to be attacking Greece with has to be, has to have four hit points. Now, if I can't get iron, and I have to attack Greece with bow guys, that's not the end of the world. I can probably do it if I bring enough of them. Alright, so uh, 
Here's Persia. So Persia might be willing to trade me the wheel. They aren't. Masonry? They will not. So I'm a little behind in the tech game right now. Hopefully Egypt trades me something. If not, I'm going to have to wait till I have philosophy. But if I can get philosophy and, I, and if I get it first, I'm going to have iron working. I'm going to have a lot of things. I'm going to keep building settlers. Now my next city, um, I want to have a city beside the capital. Again, maybe, uh, maybe here, maybe here, but I'm thinking for sure there's going to be one here, but I'm thinking maybe I should build some further out be while I still can. I need one there because I need that special resource, but that city's not going to help at all. This city is going to going to be crucial. So I'm setting that warrior to auto explore because this is a very small map and there's not much to explore. So it's not really uh, that important. Explore exploration is important because you want to explore as much as you can. It's very important to get as much as you can explored as quickly as you can. It helps. Every bit that you explore helps you later in the game. So the tax rate looks good. There's going to be a war happening with Greece, that's for sure. I have to. So I gave my guy command to move. And since he saw the Greek guy, he stopped. And that's because I had that option selected. If I had the cancel orders for friendly... Uh, Unit uh, uh, unchecked, that wouldn't happen. He would have kept walking. So I'm just going to build as many archers as I can, as quickly as I can. And once I have a lot of them, it's the second that I have enough that I think that I'm able to do something with. I'm going to have to go for it. Here's Rome, two turns. Treasury is running low. So here's my next city. This is kind of like just enabling me passage. I want to have this city down here. Maybe I should just go. I need that, that resource, that, that hill right there. I need that badly. I should go. I should go further. I can get such a better city if I go a little further. Even this.
I am thinking that. I need to get cities up there fast. First time chat from viewer, Xyloni, thumbs up. My English is poor. <laughs> That's all right, man. They should add military alliances like NATO and HD resolution. I mean, yeah, they, I guess, yeah, they, they could. I was talking about how there, there is a United Nations, but uh, yeah, the, the HD resolution thing. For sure, for sure, the HD resolution thing is... Uh, it's kind of needed at this point. I mean, me, I have this thing kind of on a smaller screen and it looks kind of HD to me, but I know that on a lot of screens it, it doesn't really look, look that great. Absolutely. Welcome to the channel, man. I hope you're enjoying. All right, so um, I need to get some cities built. I wish I had a road going up this way. It would help things a lot, but... I don't have time to build roads. They just grew. Rome is looking okay. All right, so uh, Rome is good to keep producing uh, settlers, and that's great. Writing is on the way. So I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to keep going for philosophy. 
uh, writing allows you to uh, create embassies. The Greeks are the happiest nation in the world. That's not good. Now I'm going to build a road on these furs. And what that road is going to do, like I said earlier, it is going to allow me to uh, have an extra coin on the square. So instead of getting one coin from the square, I'll get two. And it's going to give me that, the furs. So the furs counts as a luxury. And what luxury does is it makes your people happy. So there are a few different ways to make your people happy. One is with military. Uh, two is by using the taxes, like how I did it earlier. And the other way is by getting luxuries. So I want to try to get some luxuries. Luxuries are very important. I'm going to go ahead and build uh, workers because just because they're needed. I need to get a road up that way and I need to build a city. I need to get, this is a luxury called uh, incense. I need to get that incense if I can. This is a luxury here, ivory. I need to get that if I can. And this is one over here, silk. So I need to try to get that. Here's another one here. There's tons of them. And there's uh, this, this grapes up here. This is one too. So I got to try to grab as much of this area as I can here. Now, one thing worth noting is that this luxury here, these elephants, this is ivory. Ivory is a luxury that makes your people happy. And it does another thing. It allows you to build a wonder called the... I forget what it's called. So it allows you to build a wonder. But what a wonder is, is a building that takes a really long time to build that no one else can build. And there are uh, a bunch of them in the game. And ivory lets you build a wonder. And if Greece builds this wonder, I'm screwed. I'm screwed if Greece builds this wonder. So what I'm gonna do to try to stop Greece, because Greece is probably gonna build the wonder, is I'm going to attack Athens as soon as I possibly can. I'm going to try to attack Athens with everything I have and try to take it over. And if I can take over Athens shortly after they build the wonder, it's called the Statue of Zeus. So the wonder that the Greece are allowed to build right now is called the Statue of Zeus. And what the Statue of Zeus does is it allows you to um, it gives you free free military troops. It gives you a, a new military unit every few turns for a long time and they're relatively strong. And I cannot. Where can I build a city now? I want to get this area here, but that area there is really not really going to help that much. If I get a city up there, that'll be great. Here's what I'm thinking. So Greece just built another city. Okay, he's got the wines.
So I've got two archers done now. And that's great. But it's not really about how many archers I'm get I have that I'm really concerning myself with right now. What I'm concerning myself with is <clears throat> how fast I can build them. So this city right now has a production of four. Can build an archer in five turns. If this city had a production of ten, it could build an archer every two turns. And it can. It's not going to be hard for the city to get a production of 10. It will have a production of 10 by the time it's size 5. All I need to do is get the city to size 5. So I found Egypt, found Persia, found everybody. Uh, Persia's moving in here, so. And they built a city on hills. So when you build your cities on hills, they get a defensive bonus. So that's not good. That's not good. I should probably build a city on this fucking hill. Then I get the incense plus the defensive bonus. The only problem is then you don't get the production from the hill. Because the hill gives you extra production. If you mine it. Um, just growed again now its production is six so see where that's going I'm trying to get a road out there so that I can send settlers up there that way quickly This guy's just going to get out of here. The city needs to grow as fast as it can. Uh, so, when your cities start out, all right, they have a, a border of, of one tile. Uh, in order to increase your border, you, you have to get culture. So when you get 10 culture, your border will increase. And it will look like what the capitals look like looks like. It's that shape. It's two squares away from your city. Your citizens in your city can use anything within two tiles. So the capital, because it has a granary, or because it has a palace, expanded already because it got 10 culture and it can see two tiles. In eight turns, it's going to expand again. So, and that's good. So, uh... The capital is going to expand. It, to get these cities to expand, I'm going to have to build either temples or libraries in them. And I will. Very soon. So, I've got three archers now. Once I get around ten, I'm probably going to attack 
Greece. Once I get around 10. So Rome just grew. I guess I, I'll just leave it for now. So the Greeks have iron. The Greeks have iron. And they have and they have uh, really powerful spearmen. So this is a uh, uh, this is going to get crazy. I have another settler, so where am I going to send my settler? So I'm trying to build a road as fast as I can. The Persians are threatening me. They have a guy outside my city. They are letting me know that they're thinking about attacking. That's not good because I'm thinking about attacking Greece. However, maybe I should just attack Persia. So I'm, I'm going to get philosophy in one turn. So, since I've gotten philosophy, it doesn't tell me whether I've gotten it first. But if I did get it first, this next te technology that I get is going to be free. So, I could choose map making, which takes the longest. But do, are boats really going to help me right now? Maybe not. Court of Laws would be great. Literature would be great. I'm going to choose literature because that's going to help me right now. So I got a free technology because I got philosophy first. So now I'm going to research ceremonial burial because my, it's, it's a basic technology. I'm, I'm able to finish ceremonial burial in four, four turns. 
It's crazy. I'm thinking about attacking Persia instead of Greece, because I think this is the Persian capital right here, which is not far from me. So I could attack the Persian capital more easily than I could attack the Greek capital. The Greeks are fairly powerful. They are. So I'm just thinking about what I should do. Now, since I got that technology, someone is going to want to trade with me. Persia doesn't like me. I don't like Greece. Let's see what Cleopatra has to say. Will she take ironworking for writing? She will. I can even get masonry. Look at that. So I give her writing and I get three technologies. That's incredible. I'm going to go ahead and get ceremonial burial on my own because it's only going to take four turns. Yet I have philosophy and literature and she doesn't. So I'm pretty far ahead in the tech game now. I don't really want to trade things to these guys because I'm going to have to fight them. And I want to... I don't want to help them out even if, even if I'm helping myself out because I have what I need. I don't really need their technologies that bad. None of them have writing even, let alone literature or this and that. So I'm thinking maybe I should start sending money to Egypt and pay them instead of paying Persia. Maybe pay Greece because... Okay, so Greece has iron. So when I got iron working... What that did is that uh, that shows me all the iron on the map. So there, there was iron here, but I couldn't see it. Now I can see it. There's an iron here. So I don't even have iron to build my specialty guys. That looks good. So I don't know who I'm going to go to war with yet. I want to go to war with Greece, but it might not happen. As much as I want to. But it might still. So every turn, I, I start eventually to get into the habit of every turn taking a look at this screen quickly just to make sure that I have no unhappy citizens before I end my turn, just in case there's a civil disorder. Now, Persia is moving more troops beside my city. Luckily, I just got here with a couple warriors, so 
maybe that's going to deter them. Now it looks like Persia wants to attack. My one uh, warrior was not deterring them. I'm going to go ahead and take a look inside their territory since I have to to get through it. Uh, this forest, if I cut this forest down, I'm going to get 10 production. Uh, 10. 10 of these little production things uh, to Kume. And since I have two workers on the uh, tile, I can make them both clear forest and it will get done twice as fast. I don't know what to do with the settler. I'm going to wait. I need to wait. I'm going to go ahead and move some people up the field. Because things are getting dangerous. Persia is annoyed. Did I have... Look at this. So the Persians have declared war. Whether or not I wanted to go to war with Persia or Greece. Persia has wasted no time. They've attacked me once. They've destroyed one of my warriors. The other one was able to escape with his life. I'm going to fortify this warrior on the on that mountain because when you fortify uh, guys on mountains, they get defensive bonuses. So not only does this warrior get a defensive bonus, I'm also blocking Persia from using the iron. So that's helpful. I kind of want to attack this warrior because... He might attack me back, but if I die, there's only one warrior left in my town to defend, but these guys will be here soon. So here it goes. War with Persia. I was not able to secure a victory. Ouch, that hurts. That hurts. So I'm finally getting some spearmen built. So I've got uh, ceremonial burial, that's great. I'm just gonna keep researching this way. Maybe give some gold to Cleopatra, hopefully she doesn't attack. Now, should I try to get horseback riding for myself and mysticism? I feel like I should. All right, so gotten to, got some good technology now. I will continue with polytheism. And I will uh, put my science back up.
bastard keeps attacking me. Hopefully I can get him this time. So I managed to get uh, one of his horsemen, so that's pretty cool. Grace is here. He is cautious. I really don't want him to attack. Hmm. Now this city, uh, I'm not going to let get real big. That's as big as it's going to get. Because for the simple fact that I don't want Rome to have to sacrifice too much. I need Rome to grow and get to a good size. And all my other cities too. When this city gets to size 5... It's going to be like a pivotal moment. It's going to be a pivotal moment. And you'll see why. Here comes Persia. Thank you. 
Gonna go ahead and try to defend Antium here. Hopefully I can get these two victories. I can. Okay, that's good. Things are good. Xyloni, sup? Hand clap, is that what that is? High five? High five, man. High five. Thanks for watching, man. I hope you're enjoying the show. All right, so, um... The city's looking good. Spearman on the way. Barracks is almost done here. Not too many enemies on the forefront. And four archers up front. I want to get these two up front ASAP. I want to have about... Probably about 10 to 12. Maybe more. Heading into Persia. Here he comes again. Here he comes with a bunch of guys. Okay. That's okay though, because I'm starting to amass a somewhat of a force here now too. I need to try to take the Persian capital ASAP. All right, so Vey has grown to size five this turn. This is a pivotal turn because I'm going to stop Vey from growing now. Vey is going to stay at size five. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to free up some tiles. Not many, but the capital is going to suffer. And it's for the good of this city. So if this city has three tiles, at least, that give it two food and two production each, and has two tiles that give it one food and two production each it should have 10 production but it doesn't now the now the only thing that i can think of the reasoning why this city doesn't have 10 production right now is because it's a tiny map on any other map if you have a city that's two tiles away from the capital and you have 11 production you will lose one production and you will have 10 and it will allow you to build archers in two turns however uh this city needs to be size six for it to work in this in uh this uh, map type which is a little bit of a letdown and it's funny because now, yeah, that's it. That's all I can do. Actually, I can do this, I think. There, so with seven production a turn, the city is able to, the city is able to build uh, archers in three turns, which isn't bad, but I was really hoping to get two just there whatever next game will go better all right here's a battle here's a battle with persia got them Here's another battle. Lost. Go again. Holy shit, he killed two of my guys. Got him on the third. Right on. Okay, so next I will be... Mining this, I guess. And I'll send these two up. Check to see everyone's happy. 
Everyone's happy. None of the cities have unhappy that outnumbers the happy. Now, I would really like to take over the Persian capital. That's a good way to neutralize people. When you take over someone's capital, that, that hurts them. I probably could have taken over uh, Greece's capital. I, I might still be able to. It will be a hard battle, but it might be easier than fighting with Persia. I thought I was going to have a city producing archers every two turns. I don't. Instead, I have one producing them every three turns. And hopefully I get another one soon. I'm just trying to think, maybe I should keep on my original plan and attack Greece. Maybe. I don't think I can attack Greece. I don't think it's gonna happen.
Yep, I have to attack uh, Persia. It's the only way. So, I am getting ready to attack Persia. Trying to get my cities built up a little. Uh, and hopefully, I'll be attacking them soon. Quite a few guys, it's not enough though. I need at least at least ten right now at this point. If I even want to think about it. I I need about twelve archers. Everyone's happy.
So I almost have 10. I almost have 10. This is ridiculous. I have lost way too many. Alright, so I got uh, polytheism. We'll see what the Egyptians have to say. They're not really doing too much. I'm going to give them some gold. I'm going to just keep paying the Egyptians in hopes that they don't ever attack me and that I only ever have will have to fight with Persia. That's my hopes. Pay these two. Fight him. When he's dead, stop paying him. Fight him. Pay them. By the time they're both dead, Egypt's not going to stand a chance. That's how the game goes. You play your enemies against each other if you can. It's about survival. You got to do what you got to do to try to survive. Now, this city is a size, is a size five, and it needs to be size six before I'm going to be able to build uh, archers in one turn, which I really want to do. However, I'll have to grow my city. Now, the city... That city could take forever to grow. So I get monarchy in 50 turns. Or I can have construction. Do I even want monarchy right now? I don't. I'll go for... Um, Code of Laws. Could be helpful. All right, um, Rome, I'm going to let it go to size five. Faye's going to go to size six. Waiting on 10 archers up here. I got a good five, six, seven, and more on the way. Finished the temple.
So rather than letting Vay grow to size 6, you're able to join workers into cities to make them grow, and you can do the same thing with settlers. So you don't always have to wait for a city to grow, you can boost them. So Vay is now a size 6, which means if I free up some tiles for it, I should be able to get its production to um, 10. I want it, 10 is what I'm always aiming for. So like this, all right, Faye now has 12 production. It's losing two to corruption. If this was any other size map than tiny, I would only be losing one. However, that's how it has to go. And we'll be making archers in two turns, every two turns. Now the capital in two turns will grow itself and we'll probably be doing the same thing as Vay. So I'll have two cities, both producing archers extremely fast when I decide I, I need to build swordsmen, if I do get iron eventually. I will... Uh, I'll have them in uh, three turns rather than whatever, four or five or more, who knows. All right, so I've done quite a bit this turn. I'm gonna take a little break. I'm just gonna go to use the bathroom. I'll be back in a few minutes.
or embark. So, I uh, got a pretty good uh, got a pretty good game going here. Getting ready to attack Persia. Their capital is not overly far from me. However, it's a little bit late to be attacking somebody. The year is 825 BC. It's starting to get late to be attacking somebody with archers. However, it's going to work. It's going to work. It has to work. <clears throat> Here they come. Okay. So, Rome has grown to a size 5. If I was to move this to here and this to here, I would have 10 production. Just like that. So, got two cities with 10 production. That's basically... So now when you're looking at your cities, you can choose to order your cities by population. That's what I usually do. Or you can order them by... By, uh... Shields. So, you can see... Two cities that both have 10 production. That are each building a guy every two turns. That's just gonna eventually amount up to so many. Like, I doubt anyone else has that is building that many. It's a little late. I would have liked to have done that earlier. Ideally, I would have had that 10 turns ago and think that's 10, 10 extra guys that would be up here. This attack would be long, this attack would be over with. However, I'm getting delayed for various reasons. But that's, that's civilization for you. You can have a plan all you want. But sometimes plans change. So one of the big things about uh, whenever you're deciding what uh, tiles you want to upgrade, you have to think what your what your city's going to use. See, I have these tiles done, you know, because 
the cities are using them. The cities are using most of these tiles that I that I've you know. So it's just like you just gotta know what your city needs. When the city gets a temple and a harbor, it's gonna be able to upgrade a bit. It's gonna be more useful, but for now, this is okay. It's getting me some guys. Maybe should have built that city earlier. Maybe should have built this city earlier and this city earlier. But maybe if I would have done that, I wouldn't have got these cities, you know? Like, it's just, it's insane. You just got to pick four or five spots. I hope that you get those four or five spots and that out, out of that, that you have enough to... get yourself something to elevate yourself in the game to be a contender to be a contender you cannot just build you have to do a little bit of conquering to be a contender because the the computers are they're mean they don't they're not fair. They don't treat you good. They help each other more than they help you. And they like to let the human player fall behind. And that's... The computers are not cool. They're not nice. They don't give you good deals. Sometimes they help you out. Sometimes they don't. You have to, you have to do something else extra to get yourself to be able to stay neck and neck with them throughout the game or slightly ahead or slightly behind because if you fall too far behind it's over and if I conquer Persia I will be the contender or I will be the champ I will be one of the two I could win the game right here but if if Greece builds that that wonder I'm talking about I'm screwed. I could take these these 12 archers right now and attack Greece, and I could probably take Athens. Or I could attack Greece with these 12 archers, and they could all die, and I don't get Athens. And that's it. That's The game's over, like, pretty much. So that's why I'm not doing that. The city built a wall. Super. Might as well uh, get some workers built where we can. Okay, so it's basically like it's a turn or two away. I have 10 right here. I have 10 right there. There are two injured ones right there. And the next two are pretty far away. So I might have five turns, I might have 10 turns. Maybe I should attack Greece instead. Attack Persia, come back and attack Greece after. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten, 
11, 12, 13. I can attack with 13. Any day now. That's it. That's it. Can I put up the science? I cannot. I'm getting code of law in 20 turns. And that's it. That's all that's important. I got literature. I got polytheism. I can grab monarchy or construction, whatever I want. Currency. I don't know that I need any of them right now. I don't know that I need any of them. Construction, maybe. Of course, here he comes. One turn before I want to go. Fuck. We'll see how this plays out. Maybe reinforcements will be here before this guy becomes a threat. And the main force can just move forward. able to move next turn and you know what else is funny oh no that's not done there are three archers though i have to wait if there were any less than three maybe but i can't i feel like there's three i can't just let them pass Even if my spearman kills two of them, he's not going to kill three, but I'm going to get this attack anyways, so.
Running out of gold. Going for it. Going for it. This is it. This is like the whole game. Everything that has happened, the whole game, has amounted to this moment. And maybe all lost right here. It may all be lost right here. There's his capital. So, if, if I win this battle, great. Game continues. If I lose this battle, I may have lost the game. I may not be able to build another army like that. Or better. I may not be able to. Or it, it'll be just... It will be a long, long haul. And it will be a grudge match. Whatever this guy decides to do. No, I can I can handle whatever he throws at me. The city's okay. So next turn, the big battle happens. I'm probably going to get it. And then, like I said, I'm going to attack Athens with like 20. I'm going to take like 20 archers to Athens. And hopefully get it, because if I don't, they're going to build the Statue of Zeus. And the Statue of Zeus, every four or five turns, is going to give them a military unit called an Ancient Cavalry. And what an Ancient Cavalry is, basically, is, um, you know, Ancient Cavalries are... They're pretty deadly. They're one of the one of the best things to have right now, for sure. If he had a bunch of them, that would be a big problem for me. So I'm gonna have to stab Greece in the back. Hopefully, keep Egypt on my side long enough to neutralize Greece. So one thing I like to do is uh, when I have a big attack like this to do, I don't do it right away. Because if in the middle of my attack, I have other stuff going on, like, I hate it, I hate when the vi the game is trying to revert me back to, to moving workers and stuff whenever I'm in the middle of a, a battle, you know? I hate that, so uh, what I do is I just fortify everybody who's about to be in that attack. Wait till everything's done. Now, the game is telling me, uh, you know, I can end my turn now. My turn is done now, but now is the time whenever, you know, I do things like check my cities. 
how are the cities doing? Everyone's happy. Got a net loss. Minus four, however, I'm about to get a new city, so that should balance out. Uh, everything else going on here, there's not much change. These cities aren't growing. The city's doing its thing. The city's looking okay. About to build a worker. Everybody's moved. Everything's done. Now I do the attacks. So, uh, archers have two attack and one defense. Spearmen have one attack and two defense. So when I'm attacking the spearman, it's it's two attack from an archer versus two defense from his spearman. It's an even. It's a 50-50. Basically, it's a, it's a coin toss. However, the fact that he's inside a city, he gets a bonus. The fact that he has been in a defensive stance, he gets another bonus. So it's not 50-50. It's like 60-40 in his favor. That's basically what's happening right now. I have a 40% chance of winning this battle against this one versus one spearman. But I have a chance of dealing him a damage or something too. So I lost the battle, but I dealt his guy a damage. So it's not a complete loss. Here we go again, 60-40. Here he goes. This is this this is I have a forty percent chance of winning this. And I finally got my first one. But I've done some damage. I'm gonna wait and save the elites till the end. I'm gonna use the veterans first. Again, chances are he's gonna win this. I'm trying to at least score a hit on him and get a hit point or two off of him. So even if I lose the battle, I'm happy if at least I hurt him a bit. So I hurt him a lot. So now he doesn't have any full full health spear guys in his town left. That's good. I figured it was a good time to attack since he's been attacking a lot. And I mean, all that attacking he's doing, that's got to be... It's a lot of uh, guys he lost. So the last guy, he puts up a fight, he gets a promotion, he won't die. Do I have any more? I got one more veteran I think. Got it. So captured the Persian capital. Persia is pretty much neutralized right now. Now, I want to go attack Greece. However, here's the problem. This city and this city both have luxuries. So these luxuries here that you see, this is spices, this is dyes. Usually, sometimes these things are hard to come by. So the fact that I have an army... Right here, it's not really actually an army anymore. And he has these spices right here. And I feel like I could just take this this group and go and take the spices and then come back and attack Greece. You know, that's, that's what I'm thinking. But at the same time, it's like... It's like, if I wait that long, because honestly, it seems like it would be so easy just to take this group over here and attack the city and come back. But that could be like, that could turn into a, a long drawn out affair. So. I need to attack Greece now. So, I've attacked Persia, I've taken their capital. What can they possibly do now? Will they take peace? They'll take peace. Uh, will they give me a technology? They will. So, I'm able to get peace and I'm able to get a technology. 
So I'm demanding that they give me construction for peace. And they're, they're, it's saying here that this deal will probably be accept acceptable. That means that they will accept it. So I'll take, I'll take construction. Great. I need it. Now I'm going to prepare to attack Greece. I'll set my rally points here now. Has to be here, actually. It just has to, because that's the spot. I'm thinking that this is like one tile away. Like, I could be beside his capital in one turn. And that's, that's pretty crazy. I have to take advantage of that. So, um, this is the capital A. I don't really know what I'm going to build here. I guess walls. I have a little bit of extra coin now. Alright, so Persia has been neutralized, and there are approximately 8 to 10 
archers right now congregating around the border in preparation to attack the Greek capital. The city of Rome and the city of Ve are producing archers so quickly that the Greek advantage in arms technology should be nullified. Uh, oops. <clears throat> that was an accident. So I'm not chopping all the forests, because when you chop the forest down, if I chop down a forest that's on a grassland, then instead of getting one food and two production from it, I'll get two food. And I can't, I can't plant the forest back right now. So I'm losing out on potential production for every forest I cut down. However, where a grassland gives you two food, a plains gives you one food and one shield. So, um, if you build a mine on the square, it gives it um, one extra production. If you build a farm on the square, it gives it an extra food. So, a plains with a farm on it will give you two food and a production. Whereas a grass with a farm in it will give you three food and no production. So they're both useful. They're both useful. You need a, a bit of plains for production, but you need a bit of grass for uh, growth, food, farms, cities. All right. Uh, trying to get this code of laws thing uh, going on. And getting ready for an attack on Greece. I want, I think that if I have any less than 20, I think that I really, really run the risk of a failed attack. And the worst thing about a failed attack is if you do realize the attack is probably not going to go through and you stop before too many guys have died, you may be able to form, form another attack like you know again soon however if you you know you go a little bit too long 
and you and a little bit too many guys die you could lose your momentum there's a lot of danger in this game of losing your momentum so you don't want to lose your momentum whenever you have momentum now right now i just took took over the capital of persia i have momentum i didn't lose that many guys taking the capital of persia that went as good as it could have as good as it could have gone really now there are probably about close to 15 so i need to wait a little longer for a few more and if i take athens it's game over it's game over tutorial completed that's how you play civilization I guess I'll have to wait and see. What was the worker doing there? I don't remember sending the worker, but wrote it up. This guy's done in two turns. <laughs> you might not have two turns, buddy. All right, so losing gold, but that's okay. Whenever you start to build up a pretty big military force, your gold may start to... start to die down a bit but it's okay because once you attack a few of your guys will die and then your maintenance cost will go down so you'll get you'll, you'll have more gold you'll end up having more gold now Greece has a ship and I'm a little worried about where he thinks he's going with that ship. Now, he's either going to build a city somewhere. Or he's either going to launch an attack somewhere. And if he's going to launch an attack somewhere, I have to be ready. So, I'm going to have to get ready. There are now, okay, so say 20 minus four, there's 16. I'm telling you, 20, I'm feeling, is the magic number. I think if I go with 16, I think I might be a little short. His special units have three defense. So I have to imagine that Behind when I when I get to see his city, he's gonna have four, five, possibly six of these things behind his walls. Now, if he has walls, or if his city is larger than a size six, which I really hope it isn't, his troops are gonna get a defensive bonus from the, from as if the city has walls. So, if he has a guy with three defense fortified behind the wall, he gets a 25% bonus. If the city is size 7, or if there's a wall, he gets another, I think, 50%. So, that's a 75% bonus. So, his defense goes from 3 to 5 or something. I should bring 20, I should bring 30 archers. That's what I think. Yeah, 30. Why don't I do that? Uh, 
I don't know, man. I don't know. I need like 30. It's going to be ridiculous. If his city is not a size 7, if his city is only a size 6, and it doesn't have walls, and he doesn't get the defensive bonus, then it's 3 plus the 25%. So, you know, it's like a three and a half. So it's a two versus a three and a half. So to kill six, I'm, I'm, I'm going to need 12 or 15 to kill six, 20, 25, if there's more than six or if the battles don't go well. That is what, that's how it goes. This, it's the math. This game is a, is a mathematical calculation. There are 20 now. That's good. I want to do uh, courthouses out there. So the science is taking uh, some losses, but I managed to get code of laws, so that's good. I'm going to do something, okay? I haven't given money to Egypt in a while. I don't want them to forget about me. All right, so there are approximately, not that many, okay. This is gonna be going down soon, very, very soon. Hopefully he's not attacking, even if he is. Actually, if he is, I'm fucked. Okay, so I got Code of Laws. See if Egypt wants to trade. They have everything I need. I 
I'm going to take currency. Let's try to help myself. Sue. Guys are getting built all the time. Guys being built everywhere. Things are looking pretty good. People are still happy. I'm a little worried about that boat, but I have a lot of guys around. All right, so now there are 23, there's 24, 25, 26, 26. Should I even try? I'm going next turn. I'm going next turn. So the grand total will be 27. I'll go with 27. I can't wait any longer. Take a quick look at my cities, make sure that nobody is unhappy. This is something I wanted to do. Here it goes. Huh. So, okay. The city is a size 7. That's not good. At least it's not on a hill. <laughs> the city is a size 7. So, when a city is size 7, it's as if it has walls, even though it doesn't have walls. So, whether or not the city has walls... It has walls.
I'm starting to think maybe I should have attacked Sparta. But I feel like having the surprise, being able to attack them quick before they can react. Um, Because if I attack Sparta, they're going to have time to reinforce Athens. So that will make Athens that much harder. That's why. If I attack Athens now and I take Athens, Sparta will still be just as easy as it was. Athens will get a lot harder as this war progresses because they'll 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 fortify it. They'll move more more troops there. Yep, and that's it. That's how it goes. So you gotta be careful. <clears throat> Greece says, "Warmongering fool, know that your invasion of our territory constitutes a declaration of war against Greece." Send your soldiers home immediately or they will be destroyed and you will be held responsible for the bloodshed. Is that right? Well, we'll see about that. We'll see about that, Mr. Alexander. So since he didn't think I was going to attack him, he doesn't have any guys in the area. He hasn't had any time to move any extra troops to Athens. I'm going to attack Athens with everything that I have there very soon. That's it. So everybody's moved. This city is going to grow to size six, I guess. It can either do that or it can shift to production. It doesn't really need production. Might as well go to size six. Okay. Here it goes. So there are 33 troops on this square. Six of which are spearmen, or otherwise. So there are 27 archers. Okay, I got extremely lucky on the first one. Dealt two two damage to us to one of his spearmen. That was extremely lucky. So I'll be lucky if I get a hit point or two off these guys for these first few battles. I'll be lucky if I can score a hit on them. One hit, I'm happy. If I can get one hit on him, I'll be happy. He's almost dead. If I can get one hit, I'll be happy. Can't even get one hit. Again. Trying to get one hit on this guy. Got one hit on him. Got two hits on him. <clears throat> he only had three. He only had three. If he was at war with me for four or five turns, he would have had double that number. Triple that number. Now I have iron. Whew, now the game's over. Now it's really over.
All right, so I'm getting ready to attack Sparta, I guess, now. That was it. Persia's destroyed. I took their capital. They're not destroyed, but what are they possibly going to do now? What are they possibly going to do? And just built a library. I might as well keep going. Or build a few legions. Okay, so there are quite a few guys on the square here. Can I take Sparta with all this? I guess I'll see. I don't want to turn my science back on. It's pretty brutal. Pretty brutal. Nice. Nice score to win. Okay, so now these uh, Greek spearmen, they've got bonuses. So they've got a three, 
and they've got a 25% for being fortified. So they've got, uh, you know, it's like three and a half. So they have a very good chance of beating my guy. I think it's like, uh, I think I probably got about a 20, 20 or 30% chance of winning. Now again, I'm just hoping with this many guys just to get a hit point off. All I care about is getting one of his hit points down. Because there's a good chance that I'm not going to win. But if I can get a hit point or two off him, once in a while get a win, I can just wear him down. So, Greece is all but dead. They're pretty much done. Persia? What's Persia going to do? I don't know. Egypt? What's Egypt going to do? For me, as, a, as an experienced civilization player, this game is done. This game is done. That's a win. As far as, uh, as, far as most civilization players are going are gonna, to uh, be concerned. I may continue this game and finish it one day uh, and do like a part two, you know, how to, you know, like how to win a game of civilization and actually go through with it and win it. Because at this point, all it's going to be is I'm going to build, you know, 10 or 20 of these new specialty legion units here that are being built. Once, I, once there's about 10 or 20 of them, they're going to go as far and as as good as they can go until I've researched the technology that lets me upgrade them to the next level the next level infantry which is a medieval infantry and chances are that's going to be the end of the game if the if the if Egypt lasts that long and they're not dead before the uh, medieval infantry start to be built they will be gone shortly after. I don't expect, I don't expect uh, Egypt to give me much trouble. So, power, Egypt is not very big. So the hardest person was going to be Persia or Greece. Um, I guess. Egypt must not have gotten a lot of cities. It's possible Egypt only has a, a handful of these cities and is really, really, really far behind. And in that case, it's 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 going to be easy. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to save the game. Caesar of the Romans, 250 BC. And I'm going to retire. So that we can see what the map looked like and see what the game looked like. So, 3 hours, 4 minutes, 42 seconds. They call it a humiliating loss. I call that a uh, pretty pretty good victory. I will play it later maybe and finish it. So this is the summary replay. So at the end of every game, you're allowed to take a look at the the board and where everybody started and how the expansions happened and stuff. This this is a, a neat feature. This is a really neat feature and I, I think everyone who plays Civilization agrees. It's cool. So, you press play, it tells you where everybody started. Yeah, Egypt had nothing. Egypt has nothing. Their capital, look it out. It's in a terrible place. So this is the smallest map possible. Um, this is the quickest game possible. I could probably finish the game in another hour and completely, completely finish it. But you can see that the spirits of Persia and Greece are broken. 
their spear has been broken. So I guess, yeah, everybody only has room for five, six city cities anyways, so... Even if you're all scrunched in, no matter how scrunched in you are, you can always get at least two or three good cities. And that's all you really need, I guess. So yeah, Egypt had nothing. Egypt was just terrible. I thought my start was bad. So there it is. Grabbed the Persian capital, grabbed the Greek capital, grabbed their next best city. They're done. Nobody's going to be able to contend with uh, Rome now, especially now that the legions are being built. Didn't even have to build a legion, but that's how to play a quick game if you ever wanted to know. This has been the Civilization 3 How to Play Guide by Frost Dragon. Tutorial. Thank you. Like and subscribe, please.